UOP is the leading technology provider to the refining and petrochemical industry. We've been doing that for almost 100 years. And we are not producers, so we don't produce any fuels or chemicals. And that's why most people don't know our name. But the reality is that our products and processes are used by refiners today to make more than 60% of the world's gasoline, more than 85% of the world's biodegradable detergents. We're, in fact, in every refinery in the world. The process is completely feedstock flexible from vegetable oil such as palm or uh, soybean oil to second generation feedstocks that aren't food stock uh, sources such as jatropha oil or algae oil. The UOP process takes the bio oils uh, and converts them from an oxygenate which has very low energy value uh, to a completely oxygen free molecule that then must be isomerized so that it has sufficiently low freeze point so that it won't uh, freeze up in a jet plane. The green jet fuel meets all jet specifications, all the important ones including freeze point which is minus 45, flash point 38 degrees centigrade. Uh, it has all the thermal stability of jet fuel and has other uh, product properties such as uh, boiling range distribution of jet fuel. If you think about what you want to accomplish is you want to make a drop in fuel. A drop in fuel is one that can utilize today's distribution infrastructure, the transportation fleet, but also is one that in all metrics is equal or better to the fuel that it's substituting. For us, sustainability means that we think about more than just the economic metric. In other words, sustainability has to take into account both the economics, environmental issues, as well as social issues. And so a sustainable biofuel is one that optimizes across all three dimensions. Second generation feedstocks are feedstocks which do not compete with the food supply. Things that already exist maybe as waste, like cellulosic waste. This is waste that's left in agriculture fields or in forests, and if we were to be able to collect it, we would then be able to use that and convert it to fuels. We produced a, a number of different samples from several different feedstocks. We've used first generation feedstocks such as vegetable oils, but we've also used second generation feedstocks such as detrofa oil, algae oil, and camelina oil. These samples have all uh, been sent to government labs for testing and certification. There are two basic purposes for the UOP pilot plants. The first and probably the most important purpose is as experimental tools. We run experiments in the pilot plants, and from these experiments we get data which enables us to scale up from the laboratory to commercial scale. The second uh, purpose is to demonstrate our technology on the long term. The benefit of our pilot plants is that they allow us to uh, develop technology very rapidly and fairly cheaply. What we've done over the past two years is demonstrated that no matter what biological feedstock we start with, whether it be algae oil or jatropha oil or soy or canola, that we can in fact meet the specifications, we can meet the freeze point, we can meet the flash point, starting with um, those feedstocks. And more importantly than that, we've demonstrated we can do it with configurations that aren't that different from today's refining processes that make diesel or jet fuel. That in the next three years, we can have these types of units up and running in a refinery or in a production facility. What we see now in the energy landscape is an expectation that energy consumption will double over the next 30 years. It's very difficult for us to imagine how that's going to happen unless alternative sources of energy have a role to play and make an important contribution. The more people that start to think that they have a role to play in creating a truly sustainable energy future, the more likely we are to make it happen.